there's the gist of what we'll be drawing today. But before we get into the final image, we're going to do some little review, a little practice. So I'm just going to grab some scrap paper. Here's some old pictures, old references uh -huh. from a past class. So I'm just going to use the back of that for my practice paper. I'm going to warm up with a couple of circles. Maybe in one quarter of your paper. I realize now we can fold it, but that's all right. Once you have a bunch of circles, pick one that you like and go ahead and put your contour line, which should be an oval that fits within that circle. And another one perpendicular to that. Make that one a lot flatter. And where those two cross, I'm going to add a smaller circle for the muzzle or the snout of my pigeon. And the top of the nose here, I'll put a little nostril so you can see what I'm talking about. Top of the nose is going to be right in line with the bottom of the eye. So the eyes are going to be settled in right next to that circle. I'm going to put some tall ovals just for now. And then when we smooth out these two forms into one, we'll have a little reverse curve and then go into the jaw. Up above here, I'll strengthen up kind of that forehead and bring it back down to the ball. I'm going to pick some other circle and try it at a different angle, different orientation. So I'm going to stick another contour line on this circle over here. This is going to be my eye line. So I'm going to have mine looking up. And then a nose line. I'm going to put it right near the edge. Pick that smaller circle right where those two cross. As we did before, nostrils at the top. Those nostrils are going to tell us the bottom line of the eye, which is right up against the nose circle. This one has some extreme foreshortening, so I'm only going to see a little bit of that other eye. And I'll stick in some irises there. And then to merge the two shapes together, we're just going to smooth that out into a jaw. Keep in mind that when they're looking up, you can see both sides of the jaw. So we have this whole plane underneath. And then for the forehead, we just want to flatten it out a little bit and maybe add just a little bit of a point to the top. And let's take a look at some of the leg characters that we'll be drawing. Actually, no, let's do the body first. Then we can add the legs onto it. 
So for the body, I'm going to be working with two circles that are very, very, very close together. You can make them about the same size or one slightly larger for the chest. And we'll be connecting those up also with a slight little contour for the back. And on the bottom, we'll have a little bit of an S-curve. Then let's go ahead and practice putting on that center line. If we took that nose line all the way down the neck, all the way down to the body, we can place it right on the form. And this will come in handy when you start turning the body so that these two circles are overlapping. So for instance, down here, we can put our two circles overlapping quite a bit more. So this horse would be coming toward us. I'm going to erase the inside here so it's a little clearer on what I'm doing. So we connect it the same with that slight little reverse contour for the back. But then we still have the roundness of the rump, so we have a little bit of a T line there. And the center line would be much more towards the actual center. Put a dotted line there, maybe that'll make more, make it more clear. And then for that bottom line that it made a slight kind of S curve, we'd still have to have that by sweeping down and a little bit up. You can see I'm making a lot of marks, but darkening up the ones that I like the best. And then when we add the legs, we're looking at how the elbow is usually found right near the bottom of the body. So I'm going to stick in my first front leg right there, first joint. Sometimes we sketch out the whole skeletal system where we have this whole thing that comes forward. We can sketch out our leg position, maybe a bent one. Oops, it's going to run into this. We'll put another little circle in for each, each time we come to a joint. And since this is a chibi, cute one. We don't have to worry too much about anatomy. We can make everything very rounded and pretty much the same thickness, fairly consistent. Let's go back up into the body here. For the lower part of the leg, I'm going to think slightly of a baby carrot. A little thicker at the end, a little narrower at the joint there. And then I'll add on a little section for the hoof. For the back legs, we're kind of thinking of a rounded triangle shape, maybe. Kind of fits right in there as the main mass. And we'll go back a little bit. Hit that really bony part of the back leg and then we'll come down. Again, getting a little bit thicker at the end. 
And then I'm just going to cut off where the fur or the hair stops. And then I'll add my hook on separately. And lastly, let's practice some manes and tails and hair and things. So for the mane, let's just give ourselves a little framework here. Here's the head, here's the neck. There's the nose. Generally, we want to show that the mane is wrapping around the neck in some way. So we can have it fold forward where it will come up from the neck and come down and around. And we'll want to make that a 3D shape instead of just a line. So I'm going to make another line and you'll notice I'll get farther away at some spots and then come back in very close to give it more dynamic. To compare what to avoid, like don't make spider legs like that, where it's pretty much just fangs hanging down. That won't look as nice and flowy as if you have some nice waves and curls. So that's when it's coming to the front. If it's going around to the back, we can start a little below the, let's say, skin line. And we can have it wrap around. And whenever you have something wrapping around and it's going away from you, you tend to like to have this part wider and then this part narrower to show that it's going away from us. Since this is practice, I'm going to draw right through the head. I kind of want you to get the feeling of that flowingness, how things tend to drop with gravity and then kind of wiggle back and forth side to side that we don't have any pieces of mane that are either going like this in the wind, because that doesn't happen, but also doesn't go like this downward, where it's very even and looks a little bit more snake-like. We want to have this difference of a curve where we're kind of going down with gravity and then swoop, swoop, swoop. Same thing on the tail if this is the rump. I don't want to make my tail in one sort of this mass shape. I want to try to get the main flow of hair again with that big swoop and then wiggle. Oh, sorry, I'll get more on camera here. Big swoop and then wiggle. Big swoop and then wiggle. Trying to find those places to make it purposeful or purposefully wide and then narrow and then wide again. If you want your hair to look particularly cute and a little bit more designy, more graphic, you can add like more of a rounded treatment to the hair so that it's not spiky in any way. We can round these all off into like noodles. And I did that a little bit on my demo. You can see where these are not sharp like they would normally be with hair, but they're more rounded, more design-like. You can throw in a couple of negative spots if you want, very Art Nouveau to throw in a little cut out piece whenever there's a big, big curl or a big loop. And my practice paper is pretty much full, so I think we can move on to our actual drawing. I'm going to get a good piece of paper this time, nothing on the back of it. Or you can use your sketchbook, of course. I'm going to flip it to portrait landscape, or not portrait landscape, portrait format, so that it is going up and down. And let's take a look at where we want it on the paper. Let me back up so you can see my entire paper. So we have almost 
kind of a square amount of width and height that we need to put on this paper. But I tend to leave a little extra on the bottom just to give it the more like she's flying rather than jumping off the ground. So I'm going to start my head just maybe three inches from the top. Maybe the size of a 50 cent piece. A little over to the left because we've got lots of wings to fit on the back. Maybe I can get these both on at the same time here. Barely dragging my pencil on the paper, going around and around and around, trying to find the smoothest circle that I can muster. And then you just take your eraser and clean up anything that will be confusing. If you would like to copy the position of the head from the demo, be my guest. Or if you want to change the angle of the head like we were practicing earlier, then you can do that too. I'm drawing my nose line. And maybe this time I'll tilt the eye line down a little bit. Try to make sure that your plot lines are actually ovals, not just a curved line. For instance, what happens a lot with younger artists is that they'll do a line like this. And yes, technically that is a curved line, but because it points at the top, it's not really wrapping around and getting that contour in the same way an oval would be. So you might want to double check just to make sure you're getting those edges rounded and you get that feeling of wrapping around. Right where the two cross, we're going to add that circle for the muzzle. Lightly, lightly, lightly. Around and around. Then I'll add that nostril. If you're not really sure where to put the nostril, we used to do this in the Big Cats class where we had taken an oval right off the top as sort of that top plane of the nose and then we have a better idea where the nostrils would be located. I'm gonna go ahead and clean up that shape a little bit. So I can add the eyes which are right at the same line as the nostrils and very, very close. Oh, that one actually I put quite a bit farther back, but this time I'm going to go close. I'm trying to keep both eyes on my circle, so this one's going to be quite a bit skinnier from foreshortening. We don't want it to be shorter, we want it to be skinnier. So even if this eye goes off, of my circle a teensy bit, that's okay. We're going to adjust the forehead next anyway. Once you have your eyes in place, you might not see the other eye like on my demo. If you do happen to see the other eye, we're gonna go ahead and just wrap that around a little bit. Get just a slight point on top. And then we'll connect the muzzle to the circle with our little reverse curve and into that nice big cheek. I'm going to put a slight angle where the other nostril would be located on the other side. Just to give it a little bit more form. And I'll divide the mouth or where the mouth will be a little bit on the low side so that we have a thicker top portion and a smaller bottom portion. 
just like with big cats, I'm going to kind of wrap it around the front until I get to that corner, to that nostril, and then curve it up into the smile. And if you'd like the mouth open, we're just going to add another little curve on the bottom. That's the mouth opening, but then we'll also need one more line that goes around that one and gets a little wider at where the chin would be, a little farther away before it goes right back into the head. And then you can clean up your shape. See how it's coming along. As soon as you see something that bothers you, go and adjust it. Let's say I've made my nose too long. Don't wait. Just come back in here. Move that line. Get rid of the evidence that you made a mistake. Right away. I'm going to move my lower jaw a little bit because now that the top one is shorter, this one has to be even shorter. Until you find something you like. Next, we're going to put the two circles for the body. If I had my circles in here, one would be right around here, and one would be right here. Definitely touching, maybe overlapping a little bit even. I'm just going to go a little bit below the chin. Put in my first circle a little bit larger than the head, but not by much. If you're not quite sure where to put the circle, by all means, go ahead and put the neck first. Blow it right off of the back of the head. A little more S-curve in the front. And that'll also tell you where your first circle needs to be. And I'll connect my second circle in a slightly diagonal. Actually, a pretty big diagonal. It's like a whole 45 degrees. And I'll connect those two up with a reverse curve. On the bottom, I'll connect it up with a little bit of an S curve. Meaning it starts curving one way, then changes its mind and goes the other way. And then I can go ahead and get rid of my plot circles. They've done their job and are no longer needed. I'll start sketching in where I want the legs to be. So on the front legs, if you want to sketch it all the way up from the shoulder, you can do that. But I'm just going to start down here by this first little kind of elbow. Just generally posing where I want the legs to be. So I've got one in front, one in back. And then for the back legs, my one somewhere there, kind of flat, coming right off the rump. And the other one is going to stretch out back there somewhere.
we can go ahead and plot out the wings, which are not going to connect right from the edge. We're going to go inward so they can overlap and come kind of off the shoulder blade here. We're going to do a couple of direction changes. We've got that first line, short, and we've got a medium up, and then we've got a long all the way to the tip. Then for the bottom contour, it's pretty smooth. It's just going to be from that tip all the way back down into the body. And for the other wing behind it, you're just going to mimic this line that's in front. So I've got a little straight line bump coming up and ending a little shorter than the first one. And while we're here, we might as well go ahead and finish up the wings. So we've got a simplified two-section wing that has the longer flight feathers and then just a row of the smaller feathers there. So on my drawing, I'm just going to give myself a guideline first and say, okay, I want my long flight feathers to be about that long. So my smaller section it's going to be somewhere in here. So I'm just going to carve off this part. It's just like a slice of melon on the bottom. Erase any of the body that's showing through. That won't happen. And for the flight feathers up here, I'm going to go ahead and leave a little bit of a gap between each one and just make sure that each tip of the feather touches my guideline so that I'll keep that nice arc, nice curve. I only put gaps in maybe the first three to five feathers and then after that we're just going to go ahead and overlap. So I'm just going to curve it a little bit then start back here, curve it again, start back here, curve it again, and so on and so forth until we get all the way down to the end. You can see that the feathers are starting to shrink in length, getting a little shorter as they go all the way into the body. Then I'll come back and I'll put another smaller row of feathers you can overlap these or not, that's up to you. You can put them across the whole guideline or you can do like I did last time and just break it up and put a little down here and a little up there and let the color describe the feathers instead, that's up to you. We just need a couple of areas to show that there are smaller feathers before the big ones. You might want to put a stray feather right where these little ones stop so that you have a little bit of an overlap there. And you might also want to add a little overlap of where the wing goes into the body that will have that little Y, little forked line there. One thing to try to avoid is making the arms of the fork the same size. I tend to do that a lot and then I have to go back and make one shorter or one longer. On the other wing you can divide it up into small feathers and big feathers as well. I didn't on this one just because I wanted the main focus to be on the front wing not the back wing so I just did basically the outline to simplify it. That again is up to you. If you think it looks better, if there were the small feathers on both wings, go for it.
once you're done with the wings, we'll go down to the legs and start adding some more volume to those, just like we did in practice. I'm going to add a couple of circles to the joints to kind of thicken them up. this one up a little bit so that the knee or the wrist or whatever joint this is comes a little higher. So then just like before we're going to connect those up and the part that's closer to the body stays pretty much even. We want a nice overlapping line so that it goes right on into the body and doesn't stop right at the edge. The lower part is a little narrower at the joint and getting a little thicker at the hook. I'm going to end it short for where the hair stops and then add one more little wedge. Trying to keep that roundness for the hoof. Once you've got all that in, we're going to come back and clean up the shape, see what it looks like. See if there are any changes to be made. Reestablish our overlapping lines. For this particular pose, I want these lower lines to go over this one. I might put in another little forked line right here where it goes right into the body. And one more fork, maybe a little more rounded, so we can see that flesh being pushed up by the leg. Oops, and you can see my habit. These are basically the same size. Don't want that, so I gotta bring in my eraser. One leg down, three to go. I'm gonna hop over to the one in the back and just draw this little elbow again, except it's going to be just that little line there going right behind that first leg that we drew. So we don't need to plot this one out quite as much. See if I can get them both on camera, I'm not sure I can. Mm -hmm. Give it that. And then just Again, straight out there. I think I might actually curve it down slightly this time. Trying to make this shape about the same as that shape so that one leg doesn't look longer or fatter than the other. Rounding off that little hook. And moving on down to the back leg. Again, starting with that kind of rounded triangle on top. I want to get this first main mass up in the hip. And this one I had the overlapping lines curving up because that was what the pose wanted to do. This one I have a little bit more pointing down. I think I'm going to have my overlapping fork line go a little bit more down this time. And then we'll go into the lower part of the leg, getting a little bit thicker at the hook.
the back leg, you might see a tiny little bit right between the front leg and tummy, maybe not. That's kind of up to your individual drawing. You might see a little bit in there. If you're not sure if you would or not, you can start right back up here again and try to use your x-ray vision to make another rounded triangle. And nope, it would not show through. So I don't have to worry about that this time. I'm just going to go over into that little angle right there and take the leg on down. Now I'm just looking at the two, comparing them, making sure that one is not thick and the other thin. And then let's go back up to the head because I forgot the ears. So we'll go back over here. So for these ears, I generally start with the skinny little raindrop that makes up that shape that we usually color in pink when we're coloring, coloring books. We've got that squishy little raindrop there. And then I go ahead and draw around it. You can see that they are very close together, these two lines on the far side. And then as we come to the near side, we're going to show the bulk of the back of the ear there. Exaggerated for cuteness. As a feeling, the mane will cover up most of the other ear, but if you want to go ahead and plot out where it would be and give yourself a little outline. We're looking for a little bit of an arch between the two ears. We don't want to have them equally tall and have that far ear the same height as that first one. We can fill in the eyes. You can do any kind of eye you want. I'm going to go ahead and keep them big and round and cute. Nice big catch light at the top. You can get fancy with your catch lights and make them star shaped, heart shaped. I'm just going with my usual kind of rounded off rectangle. And then I leave only that little elbow macaroni noodle at the bottom for the color, and the rest I'm going to color in black. You can add eyelashes if you want. Horses are known for having very long eyelashes. And then we'll go ahead and add the mane and tail. So again, I'm going to wrap that hair around the forehead. Throw back the little mermaid here, swooping those bangs around. Forelock, I should say. Humans have bangs, horses have forelocks. Then from the top, you can have a bump if you want, or you can keep it that same S-curve. That's up to you. You can get a little crazy with the shapes because we're just doing cartoony ones, but if it's going to be a crazy shape, make it an interesting crazy shape. Don't make it even all the way down. We're looking for spots where we can get farther away from our previous line and closer to our previous line. Oops. 
this awful tangent with her eyelash, so I'm not going to do that. One thing I do when I'm trying to avoid tangents is instead of trying to draw from the line to her head repeatedly, I just give myself a target and I go, okay, well, I don't want it to bump into the eyelashes. I want it to be here. Now I can figure out how am I going to get this to loop and end right there. And it might change slightly. Going back and forth over your curving lines will real help, really help to smooth them out and give you that most natural curve. So don't be afraid of being messy in the sketchy stage here. If you want to try one of those little Art Nouveau negative face loops, you can just pick the most severe part of the curve and then just add a little sliver in there. Ideally, we'd like to connect this whole shape into the mane, so I'm just going to go right through her ear. Connect that down to her neck. Maybe add another little curl in front of that back ear. I don't want to draw that back ear. I'll just cover it up. See how that looks. Classic put the hands in the pockets if you don't want to draw them strategy. In the demo piece, I drew the mane going pretty much downward from the neck. But this one, I feel like I want a lighter, bouncier mane. So I'm going to have my mane going more up. You can do what you like, your drawing. Whatever you do, try to make these individual sections of mane get wider and narrower as they curl around. And you're going to go down to the tail. Again, you can see my pencil moving in all kinds of curves, going back and forth, back and forth, trying to smooth out these coils. Whoops, it's a little too symmetrical. I'm not going to do that one. Maybe I'll have one coming off here. Nah, I don't like that. That's why we sketch lightly. Change your mind all the time. Try to find what works best for this particular piece. I think I'll throw in another one of those little negative spaces down here. And then it's time to ink.
I'm going to take my kneading eraser and roll it between my hands until it becomes a little rolling pin. And roll that right over my drawing, pick up any extra graphite so that it doesn't reject the ink as much. And I'm going to go around the outside first, around the folding line. Turn your paper a lot, always get to the most comfortable position. Oops, I forgot. Right here where it turns into the hook, if you want to round off that into a little fur pattern, a little fluffy thing there. Can do that. I like to go around my whole drawing first just because I've been known to accidentally ink the guidelines sometimes. So I find that it helps me if I just get the outside shape first and then ink the interior. But if you don't like doing that, find what you do like. Then I'll switch to a smaller pen and do the interior line. If you don't happen to have two sizes of pens, you're going to go around your outline twice probably to thicken up some of the lines there, give a little line variation. 
and then you can use just one pass on the interior line. Just about four more minutes. I don't think we'll make it to color today. Luckily, this one's mostly white.
is two more minutes. It's now five o'clock. Next week, I'll not spend so long on our practice. We need time to color. But we'll go ahead and show how far we got. Let me unspotlight my video. Who's ever ready? Ta -da! Ta -da. Spotlight. Oops, there we go. Aw, look at the little darling. I need work on hair and wings, but I figure we'll have more hair and wings. <laughs> yeah, for sure. We're time. going to be having more little critters with wings and long, flowing tails. I tried to do the outline dark, and I think I need to do the other feet, too. I didn't do the back legs. Uh -huh. I just did the front legs, but I'm kind of feeling like the back legs need to be dark enough. Well, and the leg that's closest to us in the front, the hoof is still quite thin. I think yeah. You haven't gotten there, maybe. But if you thickened up that. No, I think you're right. Yeah. I think you at least need a little bit thicker. Like a half a line. In yeah. There. So not as thick as the front, but yeah. OK. Good. All yeah. right, Frank, what do you got? Oh, look at that tail. That thing's fantastic. <laughs> Could go in every kindergartner's lunchbox right there. Lovely. I'm gonna get that good. <laughs> yeah, we'll get that good someday. Huh? It'll happen. Excellent. Well, next week we're doing a dragon. So no hair that week, unfortunately. But <laughs> we'll take that's it. all right. I can take a week off. Yeah. All right. I'll see some of you next week and some of you in the next class. I'm done for the weekend. Okay, so, have a good weekend. I'll check with you on who comes. Yeah, okay. Sounds All right. good. See you guys later. Bye-bye. Thank you.